You too. What's up? Um, um, here's another uh, informative video <clears throat> about one of my gadgets. <clears throat> um, what am I talking about? I've actually never posted before, but I thought this was uh, worthwhile. Something that I think uh, people may like. Um, I was kind of getting sick and tired of actually filling my <clears throat> coffee maker water reservoir over and over again, so I finally decided to do something about it. Uh, I will quickly describe uh, the system. Um, so I have a unit coming in, uh, pardon my kitchen, I'm actually in the middle of remodeling. Um, this line right here is coming in from my RO unit. Um, <clears throat> uh, that connects to a little um, solenoid that is actuated you know, from a device in here. I'll actually show you later what, what that looks like. Um, most of the stuff is put together with uh, components from Amazon, Radio Shack, and what, what not, stuff that I had laying around the house. Uh, the RCA connectors here connect to my actual sensor, the one that's in the reservoir that tells it when it needs to fill. Uh, this little uh, thing right here came from a float um, valve that wasn't really that that great that uh, I decided not to use because it was that really not that reliable. That's what actually gave birth to this little thing. A little DC converter that um, changes my AC back to 12 volts that is fed in here. A little switch here that lets me turn this on and off. A uh, momentary switch that allows me to top off the reservoir if I want to. Uh, four LEDs. Uh, each LED has its own meaning. Green tells um, me that the device is in a ready state, that the reservoir is full, and that there's nothing to do. This is a yellow little LED that essentially says, hey, uh, I need more water, but I'm not quite all the way down. Uh, the red LED just says, hey, I'm completely out of water or as close to whatever this, uh, this sensor tells it. And the blue says, I'm actually operating right now. So um, this little thing in here is a float that has two elements to it. Uh, it is the two different states of this machine. The top float itself, when activated, uh, puts the machine in a green state. The one in the bottom here is essentially what triggers a let's fill condition or an empty reservoir uh, state. Uh, I'm going to quickly <coughs> uh, actuate this thing and show you how it actually works. So uh, give me a chance while I set up. I'll be back in a jiffy. All right, I'm back. Uh, just to give you a quick disclaimer, uh, I'm not an electrical engineer, although I played one on TV. Um, not kidding, I have never been on TV. Uh, I am a computer scientist and a tinker of sorts, and I like to play around with stuff um, and you know come up with automation things and, and whatnot. So anyway, what I'm going to do is, so right now the machine is in green state. I'm just going to quickly actuate this thing, and you'll see what this thing does. So right now it's actually taking water and putting it inside the pump or the, the mechanism. You see that immediately goes into yellow state because it actually goes past this float. I will come back as soon as this thing is done. All right, that's done, and uh, the level went down just a little bit more after that uh, internal tank got got full. We're still in yellow state. I'm gonna do this once again. Ready to brew. Brewing. Now, as soon as I do that, and the system starts um, uh, to initiated cycle to um, brew it gets more water out of the tank so this will put it you know very close to the second trigger point all right as soon as I uh, <clears throat> was done with that the water went down just a little bit more but it didn't quite actually um, um, change that float state so right now it's still yellow I'm gonna do this one more time by the way this is a K75 Keurig unit platinum um, it's pretty pricey but it actually lacks this feature which is why I thought you know it'd be a good idea to uh, automate this thing all right so it finished dispensing again this this is where this thing uh, will most likely go red and start filling and there it is it just uh, realized that that second float went down and it triggered a fill cycle as you can tell 
the red light is on indicating that well actually just turn yellow because it just passed that first float and as soon as it actually passes that second float the machine is going to go into a ready state after uh, it realizes that it needs no more water and it'll actually stop there And it's about to actually touch that second float. In the minute it floats it, it'll actually stop. It's still yellow. Not quite there yet. All right, so there it is. Back to uh, initial state. Uh, I should note uh, that this little device itself um, wasn't long enough to. Whoop, not in focus didn't uh, actually go down long, uh, you know, deep into the into the reservoir, so I actually had to put together a little piece of aluminum uh, uh, sea, if you will, that allows me to bring it in the water a little bit further. Uh, I actually went a little too far, and because of that, it doesn't quite actually hit the fill line, uh, the max fill line, but you'd have to adjust that thing to make it be a little smaller so that it actually brings the level up a little higher. Uh, if you stick around, I'll give you the list of materials so you can um, maybe uh, buy the stuff and put it together yourself. All right, uh, so again, uh, DC power converter converts AC to 12 volts. Uh, two RCA connectors, uh, both female and male, so that uh, four total. Um, there's uh, The wires actually come with a sensor here, so when you buy this, uh, it'll actually have that. This thing came out of a float pump, or a float pump, a float um uh, ball valve that actually was my original intent but I went completely south so and I did this uh, four leads uh, momentary switch my solenoid uh, valve here and uh, a couple lines of tubing uh, this is again coming in from my my RO unit so you should have that a connector here that actually allows me to connect the internal PCB and the wires uh, and a little switch that turns the unit on and off and I'll actually turn uh, my attention to the inside of the device. All right, so here's the device um, disconnected from the machine. All right, so I use the top, the, the bottom plate or the aluminum plate that comes with it uh, as a way of mounting my <coughs> solenoid here uh, to the top of this so that it wouldn't be dangling. Uh, but internally, this is um, what's inside. This little thing right here um, is my uh, 12 to 5 volt converter. Uh, it allows me to uh, feed the PCB board and allows me to actually act activate the solenoid. The little momentary switch here is connected on one side to the 12 volts and then on the other side to the relay. Um, I'll actually put a little diagram here so you know what's what's going on to the relay uh, output so that it actually actuates that uh, solenoid. Um, this handy uh, dandy work here is a bunch of LEDs that have been rewired through to the PCB board. I took the LEDs that were in the PC board, PCB board and I just wired them back up here so that I would have the display external. Um, and that's it. That, the bottom over there is where the power comes in and to uh, the top of that, uh, right above that I should say, there's a little switch that turns things on and off. I connected that top uh, wire uh, or the on position of the switch to um, my uh, to my unit so that it would I would be able to interrupt uh, the whole circuit if you know by just toggling that switch um, I will put the parts list and a quick diagram uh, and a couple seconds <laughs> 